Hello and welcome to Vocabulary TV. In today's lesson on English vocabulary, we are going to learn five important and often used words in English with the help of useful mnemonics such as their origins, word meanings, pictures, funny phrases, examples and other word associations. Do take your own handwritten notes as you go along this lesson. It will help you effectively learn and memorize these target words and revise them later. Let's begin. Our first word for today's lesson is mundane. It's an adjective. Mundane comes from the Latin word mundus, which means world. The word mundane originally referred to things on our earthly world. And as opposed to luxuries of heaven, the things on earth are supposed to be so dull and uninteresting, which lends this word its present meaning. The best way to understand and learn the word mundane is through the phrase mundane Mondays. Both words sound similar and they have a lot in common meaning wise. How do we explain that? Well, after an exciting weekend full of entertainment and relaxation, who wants to go back to the dull routine grill of work days starting Monday? We have the term Monday blues for a good reason. Monday blues describes this feeling people have when they have to return to their same old routine and boring life full of uninteresting work. Similarly, our word mundane also describes the same kind of things that lack interest or excitement and are dull. An example sentence that makes this meaning clear is the mundane household chores such as sweeping the floor, dusting the furniture, Washing clothes, etc. never interested her. The second meaning of mundane is more directly related to its origin as we discussed. Mundane means of this earthly world rather than a heavenly or spiritual one. A sentence exemplifying mundane in this meaning is The philosopher dealt with the spiritual things, ignoring the more mundane ones. Next, we have the word harbinger, which is used mostly as a noun and sometimes as a verb. Pay attention to its pronunciation. It's harbinger, not harbinger. The memory clue for this word is how it ends. Binger sounds like bringer. Harbinger is someone or something who is a bringer of news about a future event. One who announces a future event. Like I can say, the coronavirus pandemic is a harbinger of the economic recession that we are going to face. So a harbinger is something that comes before and that shows what will follow in the future. I have another wonderful mnemonic for you that includes both these words harbinger and bringer. That sentence is, when a black cat crossed her path, the superstitious woman thought that it was a harbinger of bad luck, which means a bringer of misfortune. Two words which are almost synonymous of harbinger are forerunner and herald. The herald is also, by the way, the name of a newspaper. True to its meaning, it brings you news sometimes about future events. So let's quickly recap the meaning of harbinger. According to Oxford Dictionary, the word means a person or thing that announces or signals the approach of another, a forerunner of something. Next, we have the word plaintive, which is used as an adjective. For learning this word, pay attention to its starting sound, plaint is similar to the word complaint. In fact, you will be surprised to know that both the words plaintiff and complaint share their origins. The word plaintiff is almost always used to describe a plaintive cry or a plaintive tone, which means expressing sorrow or grief. This meaning is captured in the following sentence, which I believe would be helpful in learning this word. When our neighbor died in a plane crash, 
I could hear the plaintive wail of their pet dog for weeks, as if it was a complaint about his irreparable loss. Plaintive means sounding sad and mournful. Another example is, we could hear the plaintive cry of a wounded animal in the woods. Moving on, we have the word evanescent, which is used as an adjective. This word clearly can be broken down into scent and van for vanish. So, the memory clue for this word is extremely simple. The phrase vanish scent. When you spray scent from a perfume bottle, it tends to vanish or disappear quickly into the air. So the word evanescent simply describes things that tend to disappear quickly and vanish like scent. Things that are fleeting and last only for a brief time. Oxford Dictionary defines evanescent as soon passing out of sight, memory or existence, quickly fading or disappearing. To take a few examples, a beautiful sunset, a rainbow, a wonderful dream right before your alarm clock goes off, all of these could be described as evanescent, which means disappearing quickly and temporary. And finally, we have a very interesting word, nonplussed, which is an adjective. If you look up its etymology, non plus meant no more and originally referred to a state in which no more can be said or done. In such a state, one is totally stunned and confused and unsure about what to do or what to say. But let me give you a much simpler memory clue which will help you retain this word in your memory forever. So nonplussed sounds like no plus. That much we all can see. And plus is a common mathematical operation. Now imagine you are sitting in a maths exam where a calculator is allowed. You try doing a sum but there is no plus button. You can't locate it on your calculator. How would you feel? The answer is nonplussed. You will be left scratching your head and wondering where is the plus button. So just remember the following example sentence as a mnemonic for nonplussed. The calculator made me nonplussed during the test because it had no plus button. I was totally surprised and confused and unsure about what to do. Let's recap the meaning. Nonplussed means so surprised and confused that one is unsure how to react. This word can also be used as a verb in the same meaning. An example sentence showing how to use nonplus as a verb is The candidate was completely nonplussed by the interviewer's weird question during his job interview. One interesting point here there is no word plussed. You can only be nonplussed. Another important point that deserves a mention here is how this word seems to be changing meaning in contemporary English, particularly American English. It appears that the traditional sense of the word nonplussed, which is bewildered and at a loss as to what to think, is slowly giving way to a new and opposite sense, unfazed or unperturbed. Now we have reached the second half of this lesson which targets the usage of these five words through sentences and other notes. We will first test your definitions of the words learned so far by filling the right word in the blanks of the example sentences. You can pause the video for a while to attempt them on your own. And after that we will learn the synonyms and antonyms of each word. Our first sentence is, For a brief moment, the entire skyline was bathed in an orange-red hue in the dash rays of the sunset. The correct word to go into this blank is evanescent, which means fleeting or vanishing. 
Some synonyms of the word evanescent are impermanent, temporary, ephemeral, fleeting, momentary and transient. While antonyms would be words such as ceaseless, endless, enduring, eternal, long-lived and permanent. The robin is a dash of spring. Its presence means spring is coming soon. And the word that goes into this blank is harbinger which means forerunner. Similar words are forerunner, herald, precursor and predecessor. While when used as a verb, some similar words are announce and foretell. Uninterested in philosophical or spiritual discussions, Rajiv talked only of dash matters such as the daily weather forecast or the latest basketball results. And the word that goes into this blank is mundane, which means worldly as opposed to spiritual. Some synonyms of mundane are earthly, terrestrial, worldly, everyday, quotidian, routine, workaday, ordinary, nitty gritty, etc. While antonyms would be words such as spiritual. She was dash when her boss fired her, even though he had told her several times earlier that she was the best employee he has ever had. The word that fits into this blank is the word nonplussed, which means bring to a halt by confusion, confuse somebody. Synonyms of nonplussed are at a loss, puzzled, perplexed, confused, bewildered, astounded. In the wild, one can hear the dash howl of a wolf as though it desires something desperately. And the only word which is left to go into this blank is plaintive, which means sad and mournful. Synonyms of plaintive are mournful, sad, doleful, sorrowful, woeful and lugubrious. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you liked it. Do share it with your friends and colleagues to help us grow and keep us inspired. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.